Recently I decided to take the plunge and perform an experiment on myself. I gave up shampoo completely six weeks ago and I want to tell you exactly how and why I did something that may seem a bit dramatic. However, maybe this could be something you have been considering or something you know other people have done. Now I've got through it, I'd wholeheartedly say it's definitely something everyone should do. In this video, I'll share my experience with you and let you in on my mistakes and successes along the way. My hair is naturally long, fine, strawberry blonde, and there is lots of it. I don't dye my hair, but I have had one weakness for most of my life, and that I've loved to shampoo my hair. In fact, I'll admit that I was addicted to wetting my hair and feeling the freshness and squeaky clean feeling that comes with shampoo. I've always liked to have a hot shower in the morning to help wake myself up, and I have used shampoo almost every day solidly since I can remember. So initially any idea to quit shampoo completely seemed so far-fetched that I didn't even want to consider it for a second. Although I have to admit, over the last couple of years I stopped using conditioner as it tended to make my hair feel heavy and lank without improving the condition of my hair. I noticed that I would need to wash my hair every day, otherwise it would feel greasy and be unmanageable. I found I would need to change shampoo brands regularly to get the same good hair days, otherwise product would build up. Essentially, I was a shampoo addict, looking for my next new fix of sweet smelling shampoo. Then something unexpected happened. We moved house and in the midst of the busyness, my husband Mark stopped using shampoo altogether and started washing his hair with water only. After a couple of weeks, he got me to feel his hair and it was clean, fresh, unbelievably soft and looked better than ever. He told me to try it, but I thought it would be impossible for me to have the same result. I also didn't know how to start this transition and how long it would go on for. I mentioned my dilemma in the monthly Q&A session I host with Mark and one of my viewers reached out and shared with me the best method to quit shampoo. Right. Some of the big reasons I decided to take the plunge were 1. I have been trying to reduce the use of chemicals on and in my body in every way I can. I prefer natural products or at least living my life in tune with my body rather than fighting against it. 2. I wanted to quit my dependence on a terrible product. Shampoo is a detergent which strips the natural oils from your scalp. You have to keep using it to reduce the heightened oil production which is essentially a business model that creates lots of money for corporations. Number three, I'll be honest, it appealed to the thrift in me. I like saving money, and not buying shampoo was also less rubbish that I would be making. A win-win in my book. Four, pride. I had to show my husband that this was as easy as he had found it to be. On the 1st of May, I started my experiment. I washed my hair for the last time and binned all my shampoo containers, so there was no turning back. I decided to try the water only method, which is where you only use hot water to clean your hair. This method does have a rough transition period, but I thought it would be worth it in the end. I also purchased or rustled up a few items for the experiment, which were a boar bristle brush. These have been used in Western cultures throughout the 1800s and beyond. They were used as a very important tool for maintaining hair health. The main benefits of these brushes over their nylon counterparts is that they clean the hair, distribute your scalp's natural conditioning oils throughout the hair shaft, and smooth, style, and soften your hair. They are very gentle, so are less likely to break the hair, and it also lengthens the amount of time we can go between hair washes. I bought a 100% natural boar bristle brush online for New Zealand $48, which is about US $30. 2. A wide tooth comb to be used for after wetting hair, some baking soda, and some apple cider vinegar. After three days of no shampoo, my hair was feeling very greasy and flat. 
I had been brushing my hair like it was no tomorrow, but in the end I decided to go for my first water only hot shower, which made my skin feel better, but didn't do anything to remove the grease level. In fact, it seemed to be worse. I towel dried my hair and braided it, which meant that I could semi hide the grease level and stop me from wanting to touch it. At about the five day mark, I really noticed my scalp becoming very itchy and uncomfortable. I kept brushing my hair with the boar bristle brush when I felt the itching, which gave it some relief, but I knew that this was part of the transition period and I had to get through it. From this point on, I washed my hair with hot water only every few days for a month. I tried blow drying it after the shower, which didn't improve the greasiness. I was brushing my hair very frequently and always before my shower, yet the biggest difficulty was the sebum buildup on my scalp and on my brush. I would feel it on my fingers, especially after the shower, and also whenever I was braiding my hair. The oily buildup was very obvious. Some of my regular viewers may have noticed that I was only appearing on camera with my hair tied back. Then I learned that you must clean your boar bristle brush almost every time you use it to stop transferring dirt and oil that you brushed out of your hair back in again. The easiest way I found to clean my brush was using a tiny amount of dish soap or hand soap on the bristles and then rubbing them in gently with a soft brush and rinsing it under the tap. I'd leave it to dry near the sink and the whole process would only take a couple of minutes all up. I ditched wearing ponytails because the pony absolutely destroys the cuticle and pulls on the roots so you get a sore scalp during the transition. Braiding my hair definitely helped tenderness of my scalp and would also hide the grease. However, by the one month point, I hit the wall. The waxy sebum wasn't shifting at all and it definitely looked like I wasn't washing my hair. Mark told me that my hair didn't smell, but even I was starting to feel disheartened by the process. Questions started to rise in my mind like, how long was this going to last for? What am I doing to my hair? Will I need to wear a hat for the rest of my life? Then I had a breakthrough. My no shampoo mentor told me to use some baking soda and apple cider vinegar. At this point I had nothing to lose and had to try something. Baking soda is a natural exfoliant and removes unwanted buildup of oil. It can reset your scalp's pH, decrease dandruff and scalp irritation and improve scalp dryness. What I did was add one tablespoon of baking soda to one cup of hot water and mixed it until it was completely dissolved. I got in the shower and wet my hair first, then poured half of the mixture onto my scalp and massaged it in for a few minutes. Immediately I could feel the sebum shifting and it was like the best clarifying shampoo experience I ever had. I mostly focused on my scalp and did not rub the baking soda mixture into my hair strands itself. I added the second half of the mixture and continued to massage the solution all over my scalp. I rinsed it all out and noticed lots of hair came out with this, but it felt so much lighter and fresher. Then I added one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to one cup of hot water and stirred it in. Apple cider vinegar is an anti-inflammatory product. It clarifies, detangles, stimulates a healthy scalp and makes the hair shine. By this point, my hair was already wet. I poured half of it on my hair, which delivered a strong vinegar smell, but went to massaging it into my scalp. I added the second half and did the same and then rinsed it all out. Surprisingly, all the smell had completely disappeared and my hair felt absolutely amazing. Immediately, my hair felt softer, lighter, and didn't need any product at all. No frizz or fluffy bits. I couldn't believe what a transformation had occurred and this was the point I was converted to never using shampoo again. Since then, I've only washed my hair with baking soda and apple cider vinegar once a week and it is getting easier and easier. My hair feels softer, healthier, and requires no products at all. It is in the best condition of my life. An added bonus is that the shower remains much easier to clean as there are no soapy residues left on the glass or other surfaces afterwards. My only regret was that I wish I had used baking soda and apple cider vinegar from the very beginning and extended the period between washes by one day every time until my hair got used to it. Eventually I hope to use water only. 
For those with shorter hair, such as my husband Mark, the process is much easier and often water is all that is required. In these situations, the entire journey to shampoo freedom may only take a relatively painless fortnight. Another trick I learnt was to avoid wetting my hair between washes, as wetting your hair increases the sebum production and can make long hair feel uncomfortably heavy. On that front, I did manage to find a shower cat and have been getting in touch with my inner 1950s beauty look. Once again, this may not be required for those with shorter hair. In summary, will I ever use shampoo again? No, I don't think so. This has been a game changer for me, and I am happy to add it to my new repertoire. I had already given up all shower soap some time ago, so really it was a natural progression. And many of life's most positive changes start with such small habits. My next goal is to give up regular chocolate consumption, but I might need a little bit more time to tackle that one. If you enjoyed this video, please visit support.drsam.com 